<laughs> Good evening, everyone. Hello, hello. Welcome to Freedom Homestead. I'm Tangy. And I'm Jack. And today we're going to talk about a very sensitive subject. I guess it could be. Sensitive. It depends on how you perceive it. I perceive it as sensitive. Yeah. Because um, you ha there, there is an acceptance that comes with we can't do everything and we can't compare ourselves to other people. Yeah. But we'll get into it in just a few minutes. We're going we to we're going to let people uh, uh join us. Yes, get we are. notified that we've started our video. Darker than usual? I try to scoot. Let's scoot back a little bit. Scoot, We're gonna scoot, go for a ride, y'all. Still feels a little. I'm trying to scoot us back because. Is this? Is this? It's because we're wearing ball caps, and that light's not hitting our face. That's nice. Yeah. There we go. Here we go. Here Good we go. evening, everyone. All right. So we hope you all are doing well. How is your yes. week? How's the weather? We have had so much rain in the last few days yesterday y'all we had three and a half inches according to our rain gauge out yeah. in the garden yeah so yeah we've had a lot of rain um this is not working out well since since we poured out the rain gauge we've had more rain today yeah I've it's not actually a really it beautiful then. evening right now yeah it, look, it, it does look, it does look nice right but now. they're expecting uh in the next two days, we may get another inch of rain. So yeah. we're getting a lot of rain this week. I look like a boy. Yeah, turn your head around. But then you can't, then my face is shaded. Mine is too. We'll look the same. All right. Well, you're a dude, so I would still look dudish. Dudish? All right. Anyway. <laughs> dudish. <laughs> I can't see very well. Yeah, it's also extremely hot and muggy oh my gosh. here. It's, it's like a um, sauna. Yeah, with, with all the rain and then with all this heat. Hey, Grammy Kid. It's just super muggy, super humid. Um, so yeah. Yeah. It's we're we're in we're in summertime. We are in Kentucky. <gasps> and Archer Mist is here. Good to see you. Hey ya. guys. Boots and Bounty. Diana at Justice Acres. Sheila is here. Roberta from Southern Illinois. Grandpa's Urban Homestead. So good to see all of y'all. Yep. Hey, Henry's honey. Let's see. Uh, right enriched Refuge. Deb from North Central Washington. Oh, my goodness. Let's see. Yay, Heather, glad you're here. Hello, Country Homestead Preacher. Uh, and, of course, Dawn, it's always so good to see you. I love seeing your name pop up just about every week. I know you're here, if you can be. Uh, hello, Kelly. Um, yeah, so how is everybody doing? Anything? It's Casey Davis. Like the new name? I do. Okay, very cool. Boots and Bounty. I love that. That's very, very cool. Um, hey, Lisa and Rebecca. Um, yes, yeah, she, um, she just started her YouTube channel just recently. Okay, good deal. Yeah. Good deal. First live chat with us. Well, glad that you are here. Who's um, first live chat? Let's see. It's Enriched oh, Refuge. Okay. Yes. Oh, my goodness. North Star Prep. She is so awesome. We love her. Yeah. Um, <gasps> hey, Rebel Kenner. I know some of you probably just got done watching the Stavers. Love the Stavers. And, of course, they're they're great. And they all, you know, they, they mention us a lot because they know we come on live after uh -huh. they get done. So, we, we appreciate that, too. Yes. They're uh -huh. excellent people. One of our favorite channels. Yeah. I, we don't... I watch just about every single one of their videos that they put up, and I don't comment. At, I mean, y'all know how it is. You turn on your YouTube, and you let it play while you're doing other things. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I just that's just a really great channel. So definitely check them out if you... Um, <laughs> if you... Uh, if you haven't watched them. Yes. And then you got... <gasps> All of our other moderators. Yes, Serenity got, Hill Farmstead. You got North Star Prepstetter, mm -hmm. Serenity Hill Farmstead, 1870s mm -hmm. Homestead, 
Oh my gosh, who will, I mean, I'm going to miss one. I know, we're going to miss some. Um, uh, but yeah, we have a lot of excellent. You know, Fundamental uh, Home hasn't been on there with us lately, but uh -huh. they're, they're one of our good friends. And yes. Yeah, Amanda's been really, really busy. And we've been really, really busy, which is why we have not put out any videos yeah. this week. Yeah, we apologize for that. We leave that on. Uh, we, we've missed uh, we've missed posting since our last live last yes. week. Which kind of rolls into our the, subject for what tonight. What we were going to talk about tonight. And we really, we, we we're sure this is going to strike a chord with all of y'all. Because we sure. all strike a chord, yeah. Everyone's got a balance. Well, yeah, but you the way you said it, I thought it was going to upset some people. No. That's the way I took it. Well, that's not what I said. Well... So it's good. <laughs> I'm just joking. You and the rest of the world, but that's a whole uh, different other thing. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll move on from that. Uh. <laughs> yeah, we did title our, um, you know, we wanted to give everybody a few minutes to join us and say oh, hi and, and everything. So yeah, we're still saying hi to everybody, but yeah, here in just a few minutes, we do want to talk about, you know, something that we deal with a lot, something that most homesteaders deal with. Mm -hmm. Um and that is is balancing your homestead life if you have a normal well i'm not a normal i, I don't know how to say it <laughs> when you when you are in the grind when you are still in the grind i have a separate career outside the house and so do i well in the house but you work I from work, home uh -huh. but i mean i'm a small business owner we both have full-time jobs mm -hmm. but we want we, we years ago we decided we wanted to grow our own food and be uh, as much of, you know, embrace the homesteading mentality and mindset and be a part of that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And we love it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can't say enough good things about it. Um, and, and besides that, the, the blessings of just friends and community and all of that, just, I mean, it... It's, it's been beyond what we thought it would be. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a balance because when you got, when you want to do the homesteading and then you got to do all the Aww, other stuff. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, That Grand is Karen. so sweet. Um, yeah, so when you want to balance that, um, we'll, we just wanted to talk a little bit about things that we do to try to balance that. Mm -hmm. And, and, that is not to say that we've got it figured out no. or that we've perfected it. Or that we say, this is what you need to do. Right. These we're, are just things that we have figured out that have helped us along the way. And that's not to say we're going to be doing the same thing two years from now. Right. It's just, but compared to where we were a few years ago, I think we have more yeah. of a balance now than we did then. Mm -hmm. Because working and homeschooling and trying to grow as much of our own food and preserve it and maintaining a household, it can get overwhelming. Yes, and so you've got to have that balance. You've got to find a balance. Yeah. One that where you're not going to feel overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, I had a video out a few, a couple of years ago, a few years ago, where we had increased our garden size. Like we had tripled it in, in a year. Mm -hmm. And I think in that year, um, I had started my virtual assistant business. We had tripled the size of our food production. Thank you, Grammy Karen. We were homeschooling both kids, and I hurt my back. And you were working. Uh, we li lived farther away from his work. Yeah, so it took me longer to get to work and longer to get home. Right. And so it just, it became so overwhelming that I... I was just like, I've, I've got to quit all of it. Like, and the I can't, garden. I can't do any of this. And the garden produced wonderfully. Oh, we had so much food, but it we had food rotting on the vine yeah. because I could not get to it. Yeah. And so, um, but now... So we had to find that balance. We had to find the balance. And, <laughs> yeah. And I think, I think part of it, and we really want, we encourage y'all to share your experiences and any tips that you have. Absolutely, because... We, this is a community and we this, learn from one another. And and our journey is ongoing and I think that it's it's very fluid where we are so willing to get suggestions and, and helpful tips from, from everybody. Right. 
Um, so I think one of the things that has helped me balance, okay, let me, let me back up just a second because you have to understand our personalities to understand our journey to finding more balance yeah. is I'm a very impulsive, um, <laughs> yeah. I know where you're uh, going. hang on. What is the, there's the, what is the word I'm looking for? I'm an impulsive, spontaneous, I'm spontaneous, um, very optimistic go getter. I get an idea, I get excited about it, and I, I go head first, all in, we're doing this thing. And Jackie is more laid back, well. planner, he's gotta think things out, he's gotta take the time, so you can see it. It's funny, overall, I'm a very impatient person, Uh huh. but when it comes to what are we gonna do, mm -hmm. I like to take a step back, and think about it for a couple of weeks, right? <laughs> or a couple of days. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we and and I think we found out how that works for us. For us, yeah. Yeah. So um, and again, with my personality, I'm one of those people that I have to learn by doing, and a lot of times that means I'm going to make a lot of mistakes. So going back to what I was saying before, um. I have learned for me, balance means taking it slow and doing a little bit at a time and not jumping all head mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that would be one of my big tips is if you are trying to find, or if you are thinking about homesteading um, and maybe you're your life is pretty full like ours is where you're, you know, you're working a full-time job, um, you've got a family. Mm -hmm. It's okay to start slow. No, yeah. There's nothing wrong with, with doing a little bit at a time because the last thing you want to do is to go all in and get so overwhelmed that you just quit it all. Yeah. Yeah, for us, we are not full-time farmers or anything like that. Um, so time management. I mean, if I'm working five days a week, I've only got two days off. One of those days is Sunday, mm -hmm. which... Which is family is, and is, church. It's church and family time. And, you know, maybe we might have that afternoon to go out and do some stuff, you know, if, if, need, if need be in the garden. But, uh, but yeah, most of that day's for family and mm -hmm. church. And then Monday, my other day off, is mow the yard... Get your errands run. Go to town and, and, and get the things done that, you know, that I've had scheduled, you know, just... Haircuts, <laughs> doctor's appointments. Yeah, haircuts. Paying uh, bills. Yeah. I had to go to the, uh, the city clerk and get tags for our vehicles today. Mm -hmm. Had to go pick up a weed eater because our weed eater broke and I had to get a new weed eater. So, yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's time management. Mm -hmm. Um... Do I have time at the end of the day when I get home during the week? Um, what can I do? So sometimes I have to, again, I have to step back and think ahead. What what am I going to do this week? What days will I get home early enough to still hopefully work on a project or two outside around the house mm -hmm. or out in the garden? Yeah. And uh, sometimes, like, my day off... Um, I'll have to plan it a week ahead of time to think, okay, I've got to make sure we go pick up a compost or wood chips or whatever it might be um, because it's hard for me to spontaneously just do it um, because I'm, I'm limited on the time. Right. I think our dog... And that's where I lean on her a lot. Um, I think it's great that we have a... You know, in our marriage, we have partners that we can, we can lean on. Yes. And so I lean very heavily on her to mm -hmm. um, do the things that she's very passionate about, which is the gardening and the canning, and she is just so amazing at that. Um, I just try to, what can I do to help? Yeah. And so that works. 
Yeah, and usually the... It never um, ends, does it? Yeah. Yeah. Usually the what he can do to help is he can be forgiving when we're having sandwiches for dinner. <laughs> yep. Or he's got to wash his own clothes. Um, something like that. But, uh, okay. So, I think another tip to, to balancing all of it is not comparing your journey to other people. Right. Um, well, I've, I'd like to think I'm a homesteader, but I don't have acres and acres of land. So, yeah. or I don't have any animals yet. Or, um, not everybody can we're not be, off grid. We, not or, everybody can be off grid. Not everybody can live like Justin Rhodes or Doug and Stacy. Um, I mean, they're they're goals, but they're <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. But um, I think knowing what our limits are. I'm shaking the table. Yeah, our dogs are so obnoxious. Our, our dogs are. Uh, <laughs> can y'all hear them? They're so funny. Anyway, yes, comparison is poison. Kids to the rescue. Uh, let's see, time management is super important this time of year too because of the weather, even on days off, I can only take care of the outside stuff before 10 a.m. and after seven, yeah, because of the heat. Um, Liz help Neither a lot. Neither one of us is touching the table, but I think it's the dogs. It's the, the dogs. dogs running around shaking. I have to set my timer to turn water off and on, yeah. start things, reminders all day. That is great, uh, that's a great tip. How are the baby chicks doing? They are growing so fast. And I told him, I was like, we've got to make sure that everything is ready to rock and roll because they're going to be ready to go outside soon. Yeah. Um, hey, Pathways. Let's see. Always do your best and you will be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is very, very, very true. Yeah. yeah. Now, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. One of the ways we balance kind of our homestead life with the rat race of the world that we're, we're in is we just have to do little things at a time. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, we didn't want to compare ourselves to other homesteaders. We just wanted to, let's try this this year. Let's, let's expand the garden. And then maybe next year we could work our way yes. up to getting the chickens. Right. And then next year and see if it were know, up to me eight years ago we would have sold everything we would have done it all at we once. would have bought a hundred acre farm we would have had chickens and cows and goats and they can't hear you talking sorry no allison's asking in to see ruger allison and jared they're our cousins that we got our um that we got ruger from so she has gotten so big She's still, she she's still very much a puppy. Yeah, you know, she wants to. She still wants to chew on everything. Yeah, and shred things and. She, she loves paper. Clunk, yeah, <laughs> yeah. She and loves fingers, paper. And fingers. And fingers. And George's ears. So yeah, we. Uh, but see, if we would have done that, if we would have just sold everything and went all in, uh -huh. I would have lost it. Yeah. I could not have dealt with that. No. It wouldn't have worked. No. It wouldn't have worked. I'd have had a nervous breakdown. Yeah. It'd be like Jay Morrell Stewart. Yeah, Jay Morrell. Yeah. Of course, Jay Morrell's been. Um, I mean, I've been following her for how long? We've we been homeschooling, six years. So seven years. Been following her for about seven years. And I know she's always had like chickens and the occasional other animal. So I think they've just they've expanded greatly. Homesteading to her is not a new thing, but this scale is definitely new. Yeah. Going all in, yeah. the way I they mean, have. we did have we did have plans four or five years ago. We knew we weren't going to live where we were living uh, long term. We knew we wanted to kind of eventually get out into the country, away from the city, and get more land. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just again, um, we were very limited mm -hmm. on. Many things. Well, and a lot of that is because we decided to homeschool. Um, yep. Whenever you decide to change your life to homeschool, yeah. you're going to have to make sacrifices. Yeah. And I mean, so we that went, means we had to put the brakes on a lot of things. Right, because we went from two incomes to one income. For a little while, yeah. And so we just had to figure out how to make that work mm -hmm. and adjust to that. I think right. we're buffering a little bit. But, yeah. Um, 
I told our kids to get off the their phones, but yeah. I think they're in there looking at stuff. Well, even so. But yeah, so so we knew we needed to to do that, but we we had to be patient. Right. Well, yeah. me more so than you, because <laughs> I mean, if y'all if y'all heard our story before, you know that Jack didn't really get into all of this until he went to the Homesteaders of America conference with me a few years ago. <laughs> So then he was like, I yeah. want to do all the things. And what's really funny is it reminds me of, um, I went to the first um, Appal Appalachian Homestead Conference mm -hmm. um, that Patera That was down in Tennessee. In Tennessee. And, um, and I remember, because I went with a friend, yeah. and right before we left, he said to me, <laughs> now don't, don't be coming home wanting to do all the things. Yeah. And I was like, I already want to do all the things. Yeah. But anyway, so then we go to Homesteaders of America. Guess who comes back wanting to do all the things? <laughs> he was like, uh-huh, uh-huh, see? See how that works? Yep. Yep. I kind of got bit by the bug very quickly at that conference. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, let's see. But still. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, still, after that, though, um, it helped us get on the same page and have goals, mm -hmm. like-minded goals, mm -hmm. but we still had to kind of be patient and just do baby steps getting there. Yeah. Because because of our income mm -hmm. or just where we lived, mm -hmm. but... Aw, thank you, Don. Thank you very much. Um, That's so So, sweet. yeah, it just, uh, we still had to kind of just gradually get there. And again, even though I want to do more homesteading stuff, I still don't want to just jump in. Right. We still... We have, I can't do you that. You have to know your limitations. Yeah. Because even though, you know, we're passionate about being self-sufficient, um, you know, as much as possible, we also have to know that we only have so many available hours in the day. And then there are things that we still want to do on top of mm -hmm. our everyday life. Like, we travel. And we know or that we, we want can... want to travel. We know yeah. that we can homestead and travel. But it also it means that we have to go through asking someone to come and check on the animals mm -hmm. and feeding and, and doing yeah. all those things. So Yeah, and that's a huge balance for a lot of you guys out there yeah. that actually have a lot more livestock and, and farm animals. Mm -hmm. I mean, y'all, that is a major issue. You mm -hmm. know, do you want to get away for the weekend? Do you have a place you need to go out of town? I mean, you've got to have things lined up to take mm -hmm. care of all that stuff while you're gone. Right. And some people just choose, I can't go anywhere because mm -hmm. I've got all these animals. I've got all these obligations. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and of course, they're yours. You know best how to take care of them. Right. So it, it's it feels hard to kinda, give that over. It feels kind of weird to, to have somebody else say they'll watch them for several days. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Dog. I know. Ruger, she's trying to get our attention. I'm not really sure. What do you need? Do you need to go out? She's take she's her, gotten aware. Her. Yes, take her to her to her human. Uh, Ruger has gotten really good if if she needs attention, like if she needs to go out or something, and we're not paying attention, she will <laughs> scratch and like pull at our hand until we're focused on her. It's really funny. Um, but uh, but yeah, I I know a couple of years ago I've gotten um, I had gotten overwhelmed. And like I said, these are just things that we've had to learn along the way. Yeah. You you mentioned the other day. No, you mentioned like an hour ago. <laughs> the other day. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the uh, uh, the other day. An hour ago. It's like, when's the last time just me and you uh -huh. have went away for the weekend? Uh-huh. And what did we figure up? Our 10-year anniversary. Our 10-year anniversary. And we're coming up on 22 uh, years of marriage. Yeah. So... <laughs> Yeah. So we were thinking, we're due. Um, we're, we're overdue. Overdue, we, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. So, and yeah, it, there's there's that balance, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have children, so we have to balance our, our family time mm -hmm. um, with our work schedule and our what we've got on the homestead. Yeah. Um, you've got to figure out how to balance all that yeah um 
<laughs> wow. <Yeah. laughs> Go. We want to. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, oh, I had a thought and then it left. Oh, okay. So I was going to say another thing too, I think is, is important to help you find balance is deciding one of two things. Do I have more time than money or do I have more money than time? Right. So here lately, especially, hey, Aaron. I have been putting a little bit more money to help me, uh, make sure that things are taken care of. So maybe where I was buying more ingredient type foods from the store here lately, I've been buying more convenience foods and it's just for a short time. It's not forever. Um, it's just to get me through this crazy season yeah. of life that we're in right now. Yeah. Um, I even bought like paper plates cause I'm like, I, I don't have yeah. the time to well, that's another thing. Wash with, the dishes. Again, we're talking about what we do to kind of balance out things. We know that when summer gets here <laughs> and we have to start harvesting in the garden. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just get the paper plates out. Let's uh, Thank you, let's get some quick, easy, mm -hmm. you know, items for, for lunch and dinner. Yeah. Because it takes up a lot of our time. It does. Yeah. It does. And not that we're complaining. Yeah. It's just we know that no, that's going to be a complaint. season right. where our focus is mm -hmm. on harvesting because mm -hmm. we know that that harvest is going to provide for us through the fall and hopefully winter. Right. And, and when it comes with like with homeschooling, um, I had been more hands on in the past because we had more time than money. Now we have a little bit more money than we do time. And so um, our, our curriculum is more... Um, independent thank you kathy so um so that means you know in in the world of curriculum you're going to pay a little bit more to do the videos and things like that mm -hmm. than you would um you know piecing it together i just i don't have time to do all the planning and do all the instruction so um anyway you know and you just have to you have to prioritize and figure out what your abilities are mm -hmm. and and accept them for the for the life that you're trying to work toward you have to say okay i can't do all of the instruction all of the planning then work then the garden then home you know preserving and getting the house clean and doing all these things can't do it yeah. it's for me it's impossible yeah like cast iron mama just commented we as a family did all of the yard work this morning, mowed, weeded, sprayed the weeds on the sidewalk, pruned and fertilized. Yeah. Um, awesome. I, yeah, you you gotta figure out what, what time of the day can we get stuff done and then have the rest of the day for the other things we know that we've gotta uh, balance that time with. Right. And uh, yeah, and sometimes it gets away from you. Mm -hmm. Today, it got away from me. Because mm -hmm. I did have many errands to run. I um, also had a meeting at, at, at church with our pastor. Uh, wanted to, I was helping him with, a, with some Bible study stuff. Then, or actually, I was pricing used laptops for, for our son for school. Mm -hmm. And so, um, by the time I got home, I was like, I even took the gas can with me. I filled it full of gas. When I got home... Mow the yard. Today, my day off, get the yard mowed. It was 90 degrees, hot, sunny all day long, except when I got home to mow the yard, <laughs> it rained and about a half rained. inch. Yeah, yeah, it just stormed. And, uh, and so now I got to figure out what day can I get home from work early mm -hmm. uh, in the next two or three days and get the yard mowed before it gets dark. Right. So, yeah. And uh, so Castor and Mama said that as a family... They all went out and did all the yard work, and I, and that was going to be my next my next level of tip is make your kids do something. Because <laughs> I know we talk about all the things that we do, um, but also our kids. Like my daughter, was it yesterday? I asked her before I left. I'm like, okay. She helped cook supper. Well. Uh, she didn't help cook supper, but she had the kitchen really nice I mean, and clean for me. Did. No, she didn't. Oh. 
Well, I saw her fixing. <laughs> but no, yeah, Emily, Emily cooks, Emily cleans. Um, Parker helps Jack outside uh, with uh, some of the yard work. Like, we had just gotten gravel on our drive. And then we had these torrential downpours, and so it washed some of our new gravel away. Washed our new gravel so away. we had Parker out there, uh, you know, scraping yep. up and yeah, filling up the hole. I didn't have time to do it, so I said, let's ask him, get out yeah. there. He knows how to use a rake and shovel. Right. And so, um, you know, and, and then with that, now Emily, of course, she cleans like I do, if not better, most of the time. But growing, while the kids were growing up, it was really hard for me because before this, before this kind of lifestyle, I kept a, a very tidy house. Um, and you know, it, it was a lot cleaner more often <laughs> than it is now. But, um, when I started staying home, the house stayed dirtier and, um, I had to accept that my house was not going to be the, uh, magazine clean that I used to try to keep it at. And um, so that would be another mm -hmm. another tip <laughs> is you gotta relax. You gotta relax and realize yeah. that you know you're not gonna be uh, you're not gonna be Martha Stewart, and that's okay. And anybody that I have ever known that has had a homestead, small farm, big farm, whatever you want to call it, has been stressed out because things they're getting behind on things oh what's that like La valley homestead said i was weeding this afternoon and my three-year-old son carried the weeds to the pile <laughs> that's so cute that's cool um yeah and and then it again that's not to say that our kids are perfect and it's not to say that they're workhorses yeah they do a lot. Besides, but they can always do more. Besides getting the family involved, that's another great tip. Another thing that we have learned through what we're doing as a balance is we have learned to use certain tools to help us either enjoy this homestead lifestyle. And one of the tools is our YouTube channel. We've actually used it to kind of document stuff. You started documenting it for your family and friends, and then people started watching, and it grew. But we've actually been able now to just, um, now we're making a little bit of money each month off of mm -hmm. it. And so we're able to just use that to put back mm -hmm. into the homestead. Yeah, getting more seeds. Um, and so it was another way for us to figure out like something else we could do to, to make it work. Yeah. 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 And it is. And sometimes it is a hassle and time consuming and we don't want to deal with it. Um, and then sometimes we, we love it. We can't get enough of it. Um, yeah, I was going to say that the, the homesteading community, too, is very encouraging. Not only do Absolutely. we learn from one another, but so the days where it, it is hard, and it's like, you know, I would rather just not <laughs> can all day, spend all day in the kitchen for five pints of tomato sauce. But, um, you know, it is, I don't know, you get on Holler Homestead or Stivers or mm -hmm. Roots and Refuge or all of our, our friends out there and watch them work on their homestead and it's like yeah i'm gonna get and then work it kind of it, it 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 encourages you it just uh get you going again it was kind of like that time i went to my first homesteaders of america conference and come back home just mm -hmm. i was ready to just hit the ground running and 100 miles an hour yeah but yeah and and i kind of miss I, I miss it because with with everything kind of being shut down and closed for so many months, it, it seems like, you know, if it wasn't for this, we would really, I mean, this is the only thing that's kind of keeping us connected with, mm -hmm. with, with all of you guys right now. Yeah. And, uh, we missed going to two cat, two gatherings mm -hmm. and I, I enjoy those. I we enjoy too. those yeah. and it encourages us and we kind of, we, that's what something we kind of thrive on that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And we just said we ain't been out. <laughs> it's just us doing yeah. something for a long time. Um, let's see. Uh, 
Prairie Girl said, leave some work for tomorrow because tomorrow is another day. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then somebody else said, uh, oh, Kathy said, learning tricks to streamline the preservation process. Yes. That is huge. Um, I think you even mentioned earlier um, a lot of things like tomatoes. You don't have time to can it. Throw it in the freezer. You can can it later. I mean, there are several things that you can do along those lines. Uh, Henry's Honey said, speaking of canning, I forgot. Did you plant ground cherries this year? No, I didn't. I did not. Um, just didn't have room in the in the garden. I didn't make room in the garden for it this year. Um, but I, I watched... Uh, That's true, Rebecca. Yeah. I watched Zach and Jen. They tasted their first ground cherry, and they were like... A ground cherry. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a little tomato, but it's... Like it's a cherry sweet tomato, but and it's tart. Different. Yeah, it's sweet and okay. tart at the same time. It actually almost looks like a tomatillo because it, it grows in a paper land, like a, those little paper You know, I'll tell you, you know, we always say chickens are kind of the gateway animal, the gateway livestock animal. Uh-huh. Well, tomatoes, <laughs> a tomato plant, is it's the gateway, the gateway plant to gardening. To gardening, yeah. yeah. Um, a tomato was the first I thing that I that. ever grew as a kid. I remember... I don't know how old I was. Eight, ten, I don't know. But I remember getting a tomato plant on my own, planting it in my mom's flower bed on the front porch. And that thing must have, it, of course, as a little kid, you know. It was 20 feet tall. Yes, it was like <laughs> a Jack and the Beanstalk thing. I mean, and it produced tomatoes. I mean, even my mom and dad, I remember them saying, I can't believe that thing is doing so well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was, uh, that's usually the, the gateway plant. <laughs> um, let's see. Homestead goals. Outdoor sink in the patio to make an outdoor kitchen. Awesome. The 1920s house is not energy efficient to canning and running AC. Yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of wanted to do the outdoor kitchen too, but Jack had built that pallet table and I was like, well, if you could build another one yeah. so I could have it out there by the faucet. And that's, that's more goals. That's, um, so one of the things that I have to do to balance my homestead to keep me sane and not overwhelmed is is i know that summer is gardening and harvesting mm -hmm. i know that fall um is when i can start working on those projects like building another pallet table or some sort of outdoor prepping area mm -hmm. for for whatever it might be yeah but yeah i mean we've got outdoor we've got gas stoves and stuff mm -hmm. so um, I would love to have an outdoor kitchen. Yeah. I would awesome. love to have an outdoor <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> Me too. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, da -da -da, what did I say? Getting started on homesteading said so far the old fashioned picnic is still on for September. Oh, cool. Yay. Good to hear. Yes. Um, uh, fall is a big building and repair time. Definitely. Um, let's see. Uh, what was the other thing I was, oh, okay. So another thing is, is oh a, yeah this you is got a green some, bean she's got some um, show and tail so another tip uh is networking networking. oh and networking yeah. or yeah. yeah community community networking in your community so i i have my green bean plants are doing good but I did definitely did not plant enough. And I'm still, I'm going to plant more. Um, when my cabbages, I only have a couple of heads of cabbages left. And then when those are done, I'm going to till up that row and we're going to plant more bush beans. But um, there is an Amish uh, farm store just a mile up the road. Yep. They, they grow it in their yard. They bring it into this little store and you buy it. Which again, awesome community. Yes. So I'm... In the process of making um, freezer slaw, it's also called freezer... But why did you go there? You didn't I, go listen, there for this. That's what I'm getting to. Okay. I'm making some freezer slaw, and I needed some bell peppers. So I was like, well, I don't have any, and mine aren't even that big yet. So uh, I was like, well, maybe they've got some. So I ran down there, and they had some peppers. So There's I got some peppers. There's 1870s homestead. They also had this beauty. I got this big box oh, yeah. of green beans. I'm showing the size of the box. Oh, okay. 
I got this big, beautiful box of green beans for $8. $8. I thought you said seven. No. Oh, okay. I said eight. <laughs> so, I got some green beans. So, I'm going to king of Which beans. we are growing lots of green beans, but... We haven't got that much of a harvest no, yet. No, no. And, and I asked, oh, I'm so mad at myself. I have a one, I had a one quart Ziploc bag of our green beans that I had picked that I had put in, in the refrigerator so I could, you know, process them later. I accidentally put them in the freezer. Oh. And I don't know if they're going to be any good now because mm. they're not blanched. I just, you know, I, I was going to put them in the refrigerator. And I put but them in the we've got, look at what we got today. Yeah. So, we, so anyway, yeah, so I'm going to process these um, and can these and get these on our pantry shelf. Um, but yeah, I was really, really excited. I got this. I got a jar of pickled beets. I got four hand pies, y'all. I got a strawberry one that had cream cheese in it. And then, really? oh, yeah. You brought I got me that a, one for me. You bought me a you brought me a fried apple pie. A fried apple. I got three fried apple pies. One for him and uh, one for each of the kids. And then uh, and then I got my peppers. Yeah. So. Yeah. It, I'm excited. Networking mm -hmm. or finding your community that you can. Exactly, Rebecca. Exactly. What. She said, that's always the problem, making relishes, et cetera. The peppers are never ready in time. Yeah. And that's true. I have my cabbage, my onions, and my carrots in there, and I had no peppers. Well, what, I mean, obviously this is great. They're only a mile up the road. And yes. so it's so great that we're trying to, you know, we're, we're finding out who we can go to mm -hmm. when, when we're lacking on one thing, who we can go to to kind mm -hmm. of fill that void. Oh. But they don't have to live nearby they don't even have to be in the same state yeah i have watched some of you guys and watched how you either built a chicken coop or watched how you did anything else mm -hmm. um you know think of in my gardener mm -hmm. how many videos have we watched to learn how to do something in the garden mm -hmm. um and for me i Never thought I would do some of the projects that I've been doing out here building because I, I can't build anything. Yeah. But I've been able to learn Keep by watching a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. So just the, the networking community. Um, I know there's many, many of uh, YouTube channels that if I had to, I could just call them up and kind of pick their oh, brain and they'd yeah. be willing to just kind of talk me through something. Well, and there have been some that have insisted we just haven't taken them up on it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like, listen, seriously, when you get, when you start building that chicken coop, call me. And that's, and yeah. And we, we didn't. We've had friends bring us pallets, mm -hmm. bring us material. Um, I can't wait to return the favor yeah. and help them out. Um, so, yeah, it is, it is awesome. Mm -hmm. And that is one way to, to make how we make this journey work. <laughs> I like Crystal said, University of YouTube is great. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Crystal was actually uh, the very first person I ever saw can mock pineapple, which is where you use uh, squash, zucchini, zucchini. and uh, pineapple juice. And I think um, Rachel at 1870s Homestead, you shred yours, right? Do you shred yours? Seems like you shred yours where Crystal did hers in chunks. But I'm just like, that's amazing. I've never heard of that. Um, hey, Lone Star Living. Hey um, there. Fermenting veggies and other foods is another awesome way to preserve and probably one of the healthiest for you. Yes, it is. And the cool thing about fermenting is it's a lot less work. <laughs> you don't have to... You don't have to do the processing because you literally let it stay you out. You do have on some your... sauerkraut going right I've now. I've got some sauerkraut going right now. Yes, we do. Um, but yeah. Uh, I can't <laughs> oh, and so one of my favorite ca um, canning recipes, it's canning slash fermenting, is the pickled pantry, which I know I've talked about it before. Um, I don't know how I missed it, but there is actually a recipe in there for... Um, I think you could say it cortido, which is like a um, like a Hispanic slaw type thing, and I've always made it 
the way I learned from Luke uh, at MI Gardener, where you um, thinly slice the cabbage and then you sprinkle it with salt and lime juice and then you serve it over tacos. And we love it. It is so good. And we, we do yeah. that very often. But this is a fermented. Read, read Kathy's comment. I like that. Fermenting chop, 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 dump, pour, set it. Yep, that's it. <laughs> that's that's it. Um, but anyway, so this cortido, cortido you, um, you, you do the cabbage and I think it's cabbage, onions, and jalapenos. So kind of uh, like doing the sauerkraut, but you add those things with it. Henry and, Sonny uh, says, would love to do I'm sauerkraut, but I'm afraid I'll poison myself. Oh, no, it's... If it if it's bad, you'll know. <laughs> yeah, you'll know. Yeah, yeah. Um, it it won't look right. It and either it won't tastes smell like right. sauerkraut or it won't. It'll be well. Um, you won't even get be, you won't be able to get past the smell if it's bad. Check out. I'm speaking from experience. Check out pickle it airlock system jars. Oh, uh, you know I have seen those. I I I have pickle pipes and the pickle pebbles, um, and I also have a crock that I used to ferment in. Um, but, but I have seen the airlock system. I know what you're talking about. I've just never used it. And the it. very first time we ever used the crock, we usually learn by mistakes. Oh, but yeah. the very first time we used that crock, we had the most amazing sauerkraut. It turned out so great. And so we did another batch. Couldn't eat it. That stuff was nasty. So... Oh, yeah, it was, like I said, you can't get past the smell. Yeah, it's just like we, we knew, like that didn't work. There's a difference what did we between do? sauerkraut and kerosene. Yeah, <laughs> like, big difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, I'm not gonna eat that. Thank you, Food Force, for being here. Yeah, sauerkraut is easy. It's cabbage and salt. It's easy. It's well, but That's it was it. hit and miss with that crock. It turned. Well, what what had happened was okay. So with sauerkraut. Whenever you do your salt and your cabbage, it releases a lot of its own water. So it makes its own brine, usually. But sometimes if your cabbage has been sitting in your refrigerator, or if it's just been sitting out too long, it loses some of the moisture and so you don't have enough liquid. So sometimes you have to make a little bit of a brine to pour over it. So um, someone had given me bad advice and I don't even remember who it was. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Somebody tried to call. Um, anyway. That hadn't happened. In a long time. In months. Um, so, someone was like, oh, no, you don't need to do that. You'll, you should be fine. So, I've trusted that person. And so, I didn't. I didn't. And what ended and up it, happening it was just... there wasn't enough liquid. So, that, that first half inch of cabbage... Went bad and it and it ruined it, it ruined all of it. oh it was the smell was horrible it was <laughs> horrible um but anyway so yeah let's see so I mean I don't know I don't want to just uh, I don't want to just go on and on and on for the sake of it but I mean maybe you guys have some tips too about how you balance. Um, all of this as well or maybe you have questions for us so what time is it Eight yeah so we got about 10 more minutes so uh what else is on your mind do you want to still talk about this got any questions yeah, what's going can, on yeah we can talk about other things um i will say knowing your priorities too <laughs> and being okay with like you know we've had i've had a lot a lot of work the last yeah. two weeks i've been slammed Thank the Lord with work. Yeah. Um, so I have not weeded. It goes, uh, goes back to the time management. And, yeah. And yeah. So my garden, well, not not all the garden, just the first two rows. Because I had weeded the back, the back rows. And then I just got so hot that I had to quit while I never went back out and finished. So my first two rows are, are very weedy. But I have been... Keeping up with pruning my tomato plants. My tomato look plants great. look good. Everything yeah. looks good. Yeah. I mean, I was really, really worried um, and actually with, that we wouldn't have a good harvest, yeah. but everything's coming in really it, well. It's looking great. and, and Even the, my jalapeno pepper pe uh, plants have come to life. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Well, with this rain, everything is just kind of... Whoa, oh, that know. reminds me. I want to show y'all something. Especially if you're new to gardening and you have not learned the joy of growing squash. Let me show you something. Several people have asked how the chickens are doing. Uh, they're doing good. They are growing. 
Yep. Um, they're still downstairs in a in a tote, mm -hmm. but they're about to outgrow the tote. Yep. Um, and I've got to get the fence up out here at the chicken coop. Okay. I've got well, to get a fence. First, I want to show you how pretty my scallop squash are. This is the green tent binnings. So if you've never grown scallop squash, they kind of look like flying saucers. And they taste just like regular squash. Maybe, it, I think, kind of a little on the sweeter side, though. Um, the white ones are really pretty. Yeah. So, anyway, it's just it's just something different, and it's pretty, and they taste very, very, very... I love the flavor. I think they're really now, good. Now, you called them scallop squash. I thought this was the... It's patty pans. Patty pan. It's the same thing. Okay. Patty pan, scalloped. Um, but, yeah, this is the white scallop squash, and this is the green tint scallop squash. You can stuff these. Kathy says she's growing the white ones. They're aren't they pretty though. They um, somebody even told me once they don't even look. No, no, no. They said they don't even look real because they're so pretty. Aunt okay. B says I've always wondered how you cook those. Okay, uh, okay. Well, what you can do, I mean, you can. Um, I've just been slicing them this way and then just breading them and frying them. Um, we also grilled some, mm -hmm. and um, but you can kind of. Cut, cut this top off and then core it out and then uh, stuff it with like cream cheese and sausage and rice or, you know, stuff like that and then stick it down there and roast it and it's really good. Okay, so I wanted to show you the joys of growing squash. Wait a minute. I'm going to mess up my story time. So the other day I went and picked, this is our very first zucchini that I have picked. This is, a, I grow the Coco Zell. So it's kind of this really cute stripe look. So when I picked this, there were two more zucchinis. Little bitty ones. That were smaller than this. So I left them. Yep. That night, we got a lot of rain. The next day, I went to go look at those two zucchinis. Those two little ones? Look at that. They went from smaller than they, this. They like the rain. To this overnight. Yes. It, well, we went over a week with no rain. Yeah. Maybe 10, 12 days, no rain. Yeah, close then to we, two weeks. we get the rain and they just, They yeah. just exploded. It was amazing. It was crazy. Uh, anyway, so I just wanted to share that because that I'm just, I'm always amazed. Like, I know that's, that's going to happen, but I'm always amazed by it. It's so crazy. <laughs> that's <laughs> on me. We get attacked by something flying <laughs> out. Something in here. Um, anyway. So, I'm so trying what to else? think. Let's see. So, today... In the bowl, there's a bowl she, on the stove. Somebody says, I bet they'll taste watered down. Oh. Uh, well, I don't maybe. know. We'll see. Um, we'll see. I think we picked them uh, before yes. they got too big. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We picked so, them before they got too big. So I but, think they'll be good. Um, and they may have a lot of water in them. But um, on the stove right here, in that bowl, I have uh, the freezer slaw. So it's sitting in some salt. And then when we get done here, I've got to make... It, that that's a really easy thing to make because you you shred your cabbage, your carrots, your onion, and your bell pepper. You sprinkle it with some pickling salt and let it sit for a couple hours to get some of the liquid out. And if it's too salty, you can rinse it, but otherwise you're just going to drain it. And then you're going to make your brine, which is some spices and vinegar and sugar. And then you pack those in freezer safe containers or jars and you pour the brine over it and you put your lid on it, let it cool. And then throw it in the freezer, and then you have freezer slaw for whatever. Um, so you don't have to process it. That's the point. Is that it's it's a quick, it's like it's like cool. a quick thing to make. Oh, yeah. Just a couple <sighs> more minutes. In minutes. Freezer slaw. Yeah. It's it. Well, and well, I've always heard it called freezer slaw. The recipe book calls it a freezer cabbage relish, I think, but it's freezer slaw. I mean, I'm, that's what I'd always heard it called. Um, and it's really, it's really good, like, with hot dogs, like, uh, hot dogs on hamburgers, um, or I even just like it on the side as a slaw. Yeah. It's good. You just, you take it out a little bit before you want to serve it, so it thaws enough that you can scoop it out, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and it's really good. She likes it a whole lot more than I do. It's sweet and tasty. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing the in, one batch. Yeah, I'm not into that as much as you are. Yeah. I don't put it on my burgers or anything mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. You don't like slaw burgers? Nah. I mean, I, yes, I like them. Mm -hmm. 
I, but it's not your preference. It's not my preference. Yeah. So, yeah. You know what's funny is in the part of Georgia that I grew up in, uh, slaw dogs were on the menu when you would go to Dairy Queen. But around here, you're not going to find that on the menu. No. You can ask for it. Yeah, you but hear it's people not talk the about menu. them, but yeah, it's, they're just not as popular. <gasps> yes, on barbecue sandwiches. Oh, it'd be so good on barbecue sandwiches. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah. I know we only have like a minute or two left. But who's counting? And I know we have people that watch internationally outside the U.S., but I do want to say to all of our USA friends and Americans, happy 4th of July. Oh, yeah. I do hope y'all have a great week. Mm -hmm. And think about our independence and our liberties and, and, and what we have been blessed with for centuries mm -hmm. now. And so, uh, um, you know, if, if you're like us, just, you know, we're, we're very thankful and we keep, continue to say a little prayer for our nation. And, and, and I just wanted to add that in before we, uh, before we end our show tonight. Yay. Um, Rebecca said, hey from Michigan, just west of Detroit. My garden is jamming. Hairstylist here off work for three months. I love being home to tend <laughs> my garden full Kathy time. Kathy says, I totally yeah. forgot to talk about that tonight. Happy fourth. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, that is one of the benefits of getting to be home is, is, uh, getting to hang out in your garden. Um, but yes, I'm very thankful that we live in the country that we live in. And we were actually talking about this yesterday. Um, you know, how we consider ourselves to be patriots. Um, there's that, but that's a loaded, that's a loaded thing. We know that our, our, our country, our nation is made up of people and we're all flawed, um, right. And we really believe that the reason why our country has been so great is because of God's providential hand in all of it. Um, but as much as we love our country, we love the Lord more, and we we see that things can well, change quickly. Well, yes, nobody's perfect. So when you got a nation of people, and people are imperfect, no government's perfect. Um, that's why they said it's in it's it's being established in order to form a more perfect union. Mm -hmm. So it can always get better. Um, there are ways to do it and ways not to do it. And I think we can see what's going on right now. You can agree or disagree whether that's the best way or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, but yeah, we definitely, when you think about all the other countries out there, now there are some some cool countries that I would love to go visit. Yeah. Um, there are some amazing places I'd love to travel to, but by and large, uh, I guess I'm biased. By and large, <laughs> I'm picking this one to stay right here, you know, as far as when I have to pick out what I prefer for my freedoms and liberties. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but with that said, happy Independence Day. Yes. God bless America. Celebrated all week, but we need it to pray for it. Actually, didn't happen on the fourth. No, it didn't. Uh, but we do need to pray for our country. We need to pray for our leaders, and we need mm -hmm. to pray for the citizens. And there's so much unrest. Um, we need to pray for truth. We need to share love, and um, you know, and then hopefully we can. Yes, enriched refuge. I agree. Our great country was founded on God's principles. Yep. Praying always, and thank you for being with us and, and yes. participating in our show tonight. Yep, and um, oh, and our daughter turns 18 this week. Yeah, we got it a, snuck up on us. We got another kid having a birthday this we week. We forgot because, well, yeah, I we told her, forget. I said, Well, I told her, I said, Your birthday was overshadowed by your graduation. We yeah. were so focused on her graduating and getting all of that. I was like, oh yeah, by the way, you have a pretty yeah. big birthday coming up. I know. So that's pretty crazy. Then, yep. But anyway, yes, parents of, well, I don't know about an adult, but definitely an 18 year old. <laughs> Adulthood is more of a maturity thing. And she is mature. I'm not saying she's not. Uh, but yeah, I think. Uh, but it's hard to believe that we'll have an 18 year old. Yes, it is very much, very much. Uh, your daughter is 37. Awesome. Oh, today. Well, wow, goodness. Oh, yeah. My, I have, my sister's birthday is today. Uh, she's not 37. <laughs> she's 29. 
think she's 29. Yeah. But anyway, turned 17 on the 18th while working in Alaska. Oh, oh my cool. goodness. All right. Well, you all have a, oh my goodness, baby turned 25 last Saturday. Oh. Uh, hey. Yeah. They, I will tell you, the any, time that they just flies by. Well, if any of you are watching and you have small children, I will tell you the best thing that I think sums up parenthood, which is the days are long, but the years are short. You just yeah. enjoy every minute, even the parts where you feel like you're going to lose your mind. Um, it's fleeting. What's that just song? Enjoy that, all of it. There's a song that Trace Atkins sings uh, called "You're Gonna Miss This." Oh yeah. And uh, yeah, I thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you're up all night, can't sleep because the kids are crying. Yeah. But guess what? One day you'll look back and miss it. Yeah. Every bit of it. All right, you guys, y'all. Yeah. Have a good one. Hopefully. We got to plan a weekend getaway. So. <laughs> so anyway. Um, yeah. uh, God bless. Love y'all. Have a good week. Yep. Happy 4th of July. And hopefully we'll get a video up this week. I have a grocery haul that I just haven't posted yet. Time management. Time management. We got to balance things. Yeah. But yes, we do want to keep y'all. I mean, we've got to get the videos up. And uh, so, yeah, hopefully we will. <laughs> yeah. All right. So until next time, remember to be prayerful. Nope. You missed it last be week. Be vigilant. I did. Yeah, Kathy had to be put it in the vigilant. <laughs> Look. Be prayerful. Read what she wrote. <laughs> <laughs> and be prepared. Yes. Vigilant, prayerful, and prepared. Yes. Y'all have a good week. Good night, everybody.